One of the most challenging soil conditions you can deal with is if you have a sodic soil. Now, to me, it's super simple and easy. A sodic soil just has excess sodium. But technically speaking, there are a few factors that would qualify you as officially a sodic soil, and I had to even pull out the sheet because I never remember what they are. It's a low electrical conductivity, a high soil pH, a high sodium adsorption ratio, and poor soil physical condition. But again, for me, sodic soil simply means we've got too much sodium. Well, there's a lot of reasons that you don't want too much sodium, and one of them, you mentioned, Brian, high pH. Sodium raises a soil pH four times more than calcium does. So if you've got an excess of sodium, your odds of a high pH are pretty good. Now that high pH causes a lot of issues for you by itself in limiting nutrient uptake for your crop and nutrient availability for your crop. So certainly we don't want to have a pH that's dramatically high. Uh, in many cases, like on our farm, for corn and soybeans and wheat, we like to see that pH down in the low to mid sixes. Well, if you're up in the eights or even nine because you have a sodic soil, that's gonna require some work to move that down. Part of the reason we're talking about this today is this is not a situation that happens overnight. This has been building up over time. Now, hopefully, you're able to catch this before it builds up to the point where you're seeing 13% sodium in your base saturation test or anything like that. When you get above 1% base saturation sodium, that's where an enormous red flag should go off and you go, whoa, 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 what are we doing here? Here's how you can solve this problem of the sodic soil. Number one, you've got to pull a complete soil analysis. And what we're really after, the specific things we're after, yes, sodium, we want to test the sodium levels, but we also want to look at the calcium and the sulfur levels because that's going to tell us what we need to do in order to fix this problem. One of the challenges, Brian, too, is to get anything to work. You've got to have decent drainage to be able to move things through the soil. And when you've got a high level of sodium, it just doesn't even allow water hardly to move through that soil. So we start by improving the drainage and putting in some drainage tile. One of the things that we've seen, too, as farmers plow in drainage tile, that sodium is not always dramatically deep in the soil. So when you've got a super high sodium level, it may be really high in the top six or 12 inches, but is it deep down three feet deep? Not often, and that's really where it begins. If you've got drainage, you can get nutrients and, and soil amendments like Brian was just starting to get into to move through the soil and take that sodium out. The reason why I mentioned calcium and sulfur before, like Darren was getting at here, is we can use those to help us get rid of that excess sodium. So here's how. With sodium, it's not in itself leachable. What we want to do is turn it into a salt. Well, salts are leachable. So if you've got drain tile on the ground and now you have good drainage in your soil, you can turn this sodium into a salt. Now, commonly how people are doing this is they're using sulfur. And this is the reason why I wanted you to test your soil. If you've got, let's say, crazy high levels of sulfur, this whole thing might happen just naturally. Once you put the tile on the ground, you might not have to spend any more money. With calcium, the reason why we love calcium so much is calcium is a very big molecule in comparison to magnesium. So if we've got lots of calcium in the soil, that means we're going to have better soil porosity. More oxygen is going to get down in the soil. More moisture is going to move through the soil. So you will absolutely have better drainage when you have good calcium levels as opposed to when you have high magnesium levels. So if, for example, you've already got really high calcium levels, you've got really high sulfur levels, then it tells me, hey, all you need to do here is put that tile on the ground. If you're low on sulfur, you probably need to add some sulfur. If you're low on calcium, probably need to add some calcium. So those are the things we're looking at to fix this sodic soil. And I want to make one more point, Brian, because I was just up in North Dakota here last month and I was talking to a bunch of growers that said, well, hey, you talk about this tile, but what if I just do surface drainage? That really does not solve the problem. And in fact, it may enhance your problem as that sodium just sits there right on the soil surface. Yes, you can get rid of some surface water, but that soil is still full of water. It's not moving things down through it and oftentimes becomes compacted as well, adding to your challenge. Excellent point. Tile is the way you solve this. And also, don't let people tell you, oh, tile doesn't fix the problem. Well, sure, tile on its own may not fix the problem. Again, you got to look at your calcium, look at your sulfur, look at your overall sodium level, and it might take some time. If you've got 13%, 15%, 18% sodium in your soil, this isn't just going to happen overnight. 
but again, it didn't get created overnight either. It built up probably over 50 years. So I would just tell you, if you've got sodium levels that high, yeah, it's a 20 year process, but so what? You gotta get started at it. Otherwise, basically your soil's dead. If you've got sodium levels over 1%, you're already losing yield. If it's over 2%, you're losing a lot of yield. By the time that sodium gets over 5% and you've got a sodic soil, um, your soil is mostly dead. It's, it stinks. So yes, there are crops that can survive that a little bit better, like barley, for example, but we don't want to just raise crops to hopefully survive. We want to raise crops to have record yields. So let's get this thing fixed. Get a good soil test, get the tile in the ground, look at your calcium and your sulfur levels, get those adjusted. And then the last thing I'll throw out is, if you want to kind of speed this whole process up, you could throw a bunch of bales out there, throw some straw out there, stalks, whatever. Just get something out there for organic material. That'll help loosen up your soil a little bit, help drainage improve in the short term. I mean, there are many steps you can take to make this sodic soil better right now. Well, as Brian mentioned, sodic soils didn't happen overnight. They built up over time. And you know, weed problems are kind of the same way. They start with just one or two, and then they grow from there. We'll show you how to stop this weed of the week before it gets out of control, coming up later in the show.